you have to make sure people like you don't be a kiss ass it kind of comes down to who ends up showing up at the round table who's willing to champion you so in investment banking, you're directly ranked against your peers. They will typically have a number for you. And based on your ranking, that's how you end up getting your bonus or compensation at the end of the year. You'll find out where you shake out based on your bonuses. I have discussed previously some best practices on the job, but being a top bucket analyst, you can't just do those things. Those things are kind of like the basic things. You kind of just be around average. So what exactly do you need to do in order to differentiate yourself and ultimately get that top bucket analyst bonus? So how does one become a top bucket analyst? This is only speaking from my personal experience and how I was able to do it. First component is of course your performance. The first part is pretty self-explanatory, just making sure you're not making any silly mistakes, being very communicative, working well with your team, being a team player, being very responsive, all of those things. Organized, efficient, are your deliverables quality? At the same time, have you been able to take responsibility for things that are beyond your own role? What they like to see in, for example, early analysts is, are you able to think like an associate? Are you able to see how what you're doing fits into the bigger picture of the deck? Are you able to maybe think of some ideas or maybe realize that, hey, we're not including this comp within our peer set, but we should because of XYZ reasons. And by adding this comp, it will increase the valuation, things like that. Now, with the second component, will obviously be your network and your relationships with other people. You have to make sure people like you. People like you and they like working with you. Again, you need to be able to differentiate yourself amongst all the other analysts. The thing is, the second part of this, which is the people aspect, may be more important than the first one once you hit all those bases. Even if you are such a good analyst but you do not get along well with everyone else, chances are you might not get ranked very well. Reality is, even if you get everything in the first part correct, you're an amazing analyst, everything's correct, you're just so on top of it, you're just a great, great analyst in terms of your work, you're doing quality deliverables, you're very efficient, you're just very reliable when it comes to the work, but people don't enjoy working with you, there's still a chance that you may not rank as well as you hoped. However, if people really like you for whatever reason, they really enjoy working with you, there still is a chance that even if you tend to make mistakes, you're not as great technically, you might shake out in the top range just because people are willing to vouch for you, champion for you because they really like you and they like working with you and are willing to oversee that. Unfortunately, a little bit arbitrary, but just trying to have both is really important. So not only do you have to perform well, make quality deliverables, also just making sure you're really developing your relationships, letting people know that you're reliable and trustworthy while not being a pushover. I feel very fortunate because I've been able to find people that I work really, really well with. I also enjoy their company and their presence in general, not just from like a working perspective, but we just get along on a personal basis. This is just me, but don't be a kiss ass. Don't be schmoozy with people. Just being genuine while still doing the work and being professional first is what my advice would be. It's so obvious when people are just saying things to try to get like a senior's like approval or like they're just saying things to you know get on someone's good side it might work for some but for others it's just so clear what you're doing so i found that the close relationships that i have are ones that just like naturally develop into people who i consider my mentors and luckily are willing to be at the round table to being like she deserves to be near the top now, again, this is more of an art than a science, but really just working with people who you like working with and trying your best to just saying that you really like working with them, you hope to be staffed with them more. Again, I would tread carefully with this one because once you say that, they might just end up giving you everything that comes their way and may not be great for your capacity or your bandwidth, whatever phrase you want to use. Just make sure you're trying to see people's character. That's what I mainly went to was, is this person person someone who's good at managing up and down? Is this someone who treats their juniors well and you know doesn't use them as an Excel or PowerPoint monkey? Maybe that's an exaggeration, but just making sure you're aligning with people who are not only good at their job and well respected, but also good in character. Because there's maybe some rainmakers and some people who are just killing it, but working with them is very, very, very difficult for whatever reason, or they don't necessarily treat juniors the way that they should.
unfortunately is part of being in a very strict hierarchy. For me, I feel very lucky to have found associates who have good relationships with the managing directors. So the managing directors have a very good impression of me because I work closely with this person and they probably talk about me with that managing director who they have a close relationship with and constantly work with. And they will start giving me more responsibilities and letting me send out stuff, showcase like my thoughts to the managing director, making sure that I'm getting credit for the things that I do and just putting me in a position where the managing director sees me in a positive light and sometimes that's helpful when you have someone being like oh you should do it this way because this is how managing director usually does it and or enjoys the formatting or this is this managing director style so you should try to cater to that and this is how you do it and just keep in mind that this whole system is not entirely based on meritocracy what I mean by this is with any firm with any company, there has to be some sort of politics involved. It's very hard to gauge objectively who is better than another person, especially when there are so many people at the round table and just so many people with their different opinions. Some may have worked with you less than others, or other people may have just worked with you when you first started and were just starting to get a hang of things. And at the end of the day, it kind of comes down to who ends up showing up at the round table who's willing to champion you. For example, if my main associate, my main MD, VP, whomever, for some reason is not able to make it to that roundtable discussion, there's a chance that other people haven't worked with me as much. I might not rank that well just because that person was not there. So a lot of this is dependent on variables that aren't exactly within your control. So just keep that in mind first. But there are some ways that you can try to position yourself in order to align with shaking out in the top range of the bonuses. I guess a quick mini rant is I'm not a huge fan of this compensation structure because it's a little bit arbitrary and also I don't think it incentivizes people to work together. I have been very fortunate to be in an analyst class within my group where we're all super collaborative and we'll try to help each other out as much as we can but this is the reason why some investment banks are more of a cutthroat culture. Again this is a bit tangential but keep that in mind when you are looking to figure out which bank and which group you're going to be in because it really really varies. But honestly, when it comes down to the day, the round table discussions, there's only so much you could have done during the year. That is one of the qualms of the system is the politically charged aspect of it. But these are just some ways from my personal experience that I was able to position myself, get a good ranking and get a good bonus at the end of the day and ultimately be in the top bucket. Thank you for tuning in to this investment banking series video. Hope to make more like these in the future and I will talk to you next time.